Hello and welcome. My name is Miguel Chavez and you're watching The Word Exchange. It's a new podcast here on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for joining us. We're here with Roman Moreno. What's up, brother? Those, that Care Bear cup, he got two Mac 10s. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. No, dude. no, that's a. Uh... Oh, what is that? A Care Bear? No, um... uh, Sergio gave me this for my birthday, dude. I don't. <laughs> Like, <laughs> like everyone was getting me, gangster. getting me stuff for my birthday, and he gives me these two mugs with a. Uh, dude, he got it's a Fortnite cup. Oh, is it? But okay. I don't, I don't get it because that's not even a Fortnite, dude. That's a Care Bear, dude. That's a <laughs> Care Bear all the way. It's a strapped up Care Bear. <laughs> yeah, ready for that action. Yeah, man. About that smoke. <laughs> Did you still watch Care Bears? No, but that was kind of yeah, in you my did. genre, huh? Kind of in my, uh, yeah. kind of in my era, our era, I should say. Yeah, I watched a few episodes. Did you? Yeah. What did you used to come on on? Uh, um, I don't even know. It was like Saturday mornings though, with Dragon Tales. Dragon Tales. You remember Dragon Tales? I used to watch Dragon Tales. You used to watch Dragon Tales? Lie. Yeah. Can't lie. Let's watch that. Yeah. What else? What was that? What was that goofy green dino, uh, dragon? Wasn't he one of the main characters? What was the main character? The, I don't know their names, dude. I just remember. I can't remember. Yeah. But all I remember is the kids would go into that chest. <laughs> you know what I mean? They go into the room. They're like, you ready? And they jump in. Oh, and then they go to that magic land. Yeah. Or something, right? Yeah, that was pretty crazy. Or the WB. I used to watch w- Warner Brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Think- Animaniacs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Dang, dude. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Pinky in the brain. Pinky in the brain. And then Nickelodeon. Man, they don't do. I try to watch some cartoons with my little nephew, and the cartoons are not the same. They're they're not the same, bro. Like, do you think there's like a lot of subliminal messages in the cartoons nowadays? I think they're they're definitely. um, I just don't even get it. They're weird now. I don't get it. Yeah. Like, I know. What was it? uh, Adventure Time? You ever seen that? No, I've like, never seen that. It's like Cartoon Network, huh? And um, what else? Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. I th- those are for like adults. Though. No, yeah, no, I'm talking about like um. <coughs> I, I don't the know. only cartoon that I've seen that's going on now is SpongeBob, and I think that's even done. They just do reruns, right? Making a movie. Oh yeah, what's it called? Sponge or something? I'm gonna watch it, bro, with my son. The movie, yeah. yeah. So, man, are you excited about your boy or what? I am. So, what what's the feelings like? Uh, so, when did you guys find out? Kind of, well, kind of take us through the journey of. No, well, I mean, we were ready, and how long you guys were married before? Had kids. Um, we waited f- six years. We said we we're gonna wait five, and we ended up waiting six. So you guys kind of discussed it, and you wanted to wait. Yeah, because so. well, I got married. I was twenty three, and um, turning twenty four, she was turning twenty. So we were young, bro, young. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that are young that have kids at like a young age, and I I think. I think it was best for us to. Get used to that life, you know, being married living together, paying bills, you know, not only that, but one of our biggest goals was to get a house first and a reliable vehicle. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause <clears throat> I remember growing up, we, we would have to like carpool with like friends and family members all the time. And it was so stressful for like my mom, you know? Yeah. There was a few times she had a car. But so that was one of our my, one of my things where I was like I I want to wait till we have um, what we need you know. Do you think like the childhood plays an effect of you know your mental the things that that you think of when you're planning and pre- preparing for kids or even marriage like the way that you grow up do you think it has a difference <coughs> for your you? mentality? Yeah, your mentality like your own childhood. Yeah, um, more, 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 uh, fear of not wanting to put your kid through what you went through. Yeah, I can see that. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, it's crazy. As for me, I don't know if it's for everyone, but 
you tend to remember the bad times more than the good times. And you remember, okay, I don't, I don't want that for my kid. I don't want that. Yeah. Or you remember like what you don't have growing up, you know, and you say, okay, I'm going to make sure I have a good job, make sure I'm, you know, ready to go so I can give my kid everything that I didn't have, you know? Mm -hmm. So for me, um, and you know, my dad wasn't around Mm -hmm. when I was born. So that, that was probably like the biggest thing for me is like, I'm going to be around. You know, yeah. I'm going to raise my kid. Yeah. So, um, but other stuff, I mean, my, we couldn't really control. Yeah. Right. You know, finances, um, single parent trying to raise all four of us. Yeah. So a lot of stuff you can't control. Um, so it's for me though, it's like, okay, I'm going to work harder. Yeah. So I don't have to stress out about that, you know, for my kids. Yeah. So, so you guys are ready and then, uh, no, man. I So it's funny, man. I was up here working, editing, doing something. And she called me down. And I was like, yeah, I'll be right there in a moment. You know, she called me down again. And uh, then she sends me like a like a message through Messenger. Like like the birth thing. Like <laughs> like an emoji. It's something like it was just like a photo, dude, of like the birth. Oh, the, of the uh, <laughs> the famous stick. The stick, the pea stick, the pea. St- yeah, she sent me a photo of it. This is what men's minds. The uh, pea stick. We think of the yeah. pea stick, and and I was like, "What?" So I run downstairs. It's pretty confusing too. Like one line, two lines. Yeah. What's one's positive, I, negative? I thought I thought she was just showing me what it was. I didn't think it was hers. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. So I come down. <laughs> it's so I'm like, crazy how we think, right? I'm like, I'm like, what? Why would you? Why for, would for, it not be hers though? For, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why was? Hey, look what I found in the trash. First of all, what I was saying was like, I said, "Whose is that?" Like, you know, like, like yeah. Now, immediately, like, you, you, like, I think that's just a fear that every good guy has at first, you know. Yeah, I mean, no, no, not not like whose kid is that? No, but like, <laughs> hey, wow, I hope hey. not. Like, whose is that? Yeah, I was like, where'd you buy that at? Like. Like it was a prank, you know, like you bought a used one or I don't know, like do they sell those on eBay? You know, so um, the fake ones. Yeah. The used ones. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then because she was smiling, I knew, you know. Yeah. I was like, are you serious? You know, so. Uh, and then and then we didn't we didn't know because she was already at that time. Five weeks. Yeah. Maybe four. I think four, four or five. Weeks. I could be wrong. But um, I think four weeks, and we wanted to wait um, eight weeks until we tell until we told anyone. So we went to the doctors. No, 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 no. We waited longer. So at eight weeks, we went to the doctors, and then we got the gender, and they were like, "We don't want to know." So she put in the envelope, and then we had it in the envelope for four more weeks. Wow! Before you knew. Yeah, and it's right there, man. The gender of the baby is right wow. there. How tempting was it? I wasn't tempted. She she was like playing with me. She would go in there. She's like, I'm touching it. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, no, no, it's going to fall out. We're going to see. I guess like our, like I hear, hear from a lot of, you know, older, old school uh, parents that like that's the original way of doing it is not knowing. They the don't gender. know. Yeah, they yeah. just wait. Yeah. I don't know if I can. Well, that'd be hard for me. I for us, know. everything has to be planned. Yeah, now. that's true. Like, yeah, the generation is just like like we're it's everything is so um focused on having everything in order. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like n- we don't want no surprises. Yeah, I think it's a trap too, you know, like I had to come to grips with my own uh life too that I can only plan so much and then the rest is really faith. There's an element of faith that yeah. you got to yeah, man, element of faith. And that, you know, in life, things are just going to, you can't control everything. And not only that, though, I think financially, or not financially, but material-wise, you want to buy the right colors, you want to set up the room, you want everything right for your kid, you know? Yeah. Um. And was it harder to find out the gender back in the day? Was it, was I don't it more know. difficult? Or? I, I have no idea. I just know that that was like a tradition. It's more like a traditional thing. Yeah. Let's not find out the gender. 
until but now it's like a more of a prevalent thing because where everybody wants to know and, and I, I mean you were there at the party we did the gender reveal yeah everyone you know it was a good time yeah you it, know. Was fu- it was fun it was fun yeah we ha- you guys had the little different color pop uh confetti confetti yeah that was fun man that was fun and, i mean i'm 29 now i think i think for me we, i think you know, a lot of people are different i've seen people that are younger just adapt really quickly when they have when they're married and have kids. You know, nineteen, and it just makes. <laughs> I you think grow a lot up. of that because they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't plan, plan it. it. They it's more of like a oh crap okay <laughs> yeah oops yeah it's a honeymoon baby. I'm a I'm a oops baby. Yeah I am. Yeah I'm definitely oops baby. I'm, I kind of like that. I, I think all like. of us are <laughs> in my family. All the kids are oops babies. <laughs> you know, my grandma would say we. My grandma has six kids. And then I go, gosh, Grandma, you had a lot of kids. Because I like to ask questions all the time. And she goes, well, we didn't have a TV. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that says it all. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, there's only <laughs> There few- was no TV back in the day. Like, all right, Grandma. <laughs> there's only a few things that could entertain you back then. I know. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Just- <laughs> so how about you, man? Where's your kiddos? Man, I'm. I'm I, obviously, uh, you're waiting. Yeah, so you're so, getting married. Yeah, I'm getting married next next month. Next month, bro. Next month. A month and fifteen days. A month and fifteen days. It's gonna be good. And it's, my baby comes in exactly a month. That's the due date from today. Yeah. Today's a six, so tomorrow will be exactly thirty days. Yeah. So it's month. it's very it's it's you know it's surreal surreal for me because I'm thirty and um you know I've I've waited this long and um my fiance mariah's um waited too and it's just now that now that we know and we we um we met and and we're doing things the right way and it's just coming so quick now you know yeah so that's not how like usually our culture is though like our culture is not like they don't understand it being so quick well, you know, a lot of I my, think their priorities are different. Yeah, the obviously. Priorities, yeah, I mean, my I, I have a a client that I because I still cut hair on Saturdays, you know. Um, disclaimer. My, disclaimer. Holler at me. I, I'm still a barber on Saturdays. No, uh, I don't really advertise it though. Yeah, I, yeah. I just have the people that want me to do it. And yeah, that's it. You know. Yeah. And so I have a guy that just got engaged. I'm like, bro, when's the wedding, man? He's all oh, probably like a year and a half, in a year and a half, and I'm like. Oh crap! Like, dude, that's a long time. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, like I, I know for me, um, the moment we got engaged, nine months later, we got married. Wow. And now, 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 for you, yeah, for me, if, if people don't know, uh, we started dating in July, got engaged in November, and on my birthday, actually, November thirtieth, and then. Uh, the wedding is March, so that's that's a whole total of what six, four months of engagement. Yeah, but you guys, you guys liked each other way before. Yeah, we knew each other, and like you and said, and you kept putting her on hold, bro. You could be like, yeah. "Hey, hold up, hold up," <laughs> and she was patient with me. She was shout out, baby. She, yeah, but, yeah, she was patient with me, and she waited for me. And what one person, uh, one um. One really good friend told me, man, she waited for you. That's a sign. That's a good sign. And yeah. it is, you know, yep. because she didn't have to. And so it shows a lot. Yeah. I mean, she's successful. She's got everything going for her. Yeah. I mean, for her to wait on you. Yeah, right. To when, to, you're, when you're ready, because she was, she was ready, right? Yeah. She's ready, Freddy. Ready, Freddy. And you were just like, slow down, Sam. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so that's cool man um how long did you guys date before while well, we knew each other for how, how long have you liked her or you know well i liked her since the moment we actually met actually you introduced us so thanks miguel like You're pretty welcome. much yeah. yeah big thank you miguel and others others so we met at we met at church that we go to and uh we just miguel met, introduced us at dinner and I kind of had an interest right away. That's cool. And, and you know, like you said, priorities. Yeah. She like was totally 
totally uh fit what I was what I'm looking for and and I'm so glad that we're doing it we're doing it the you can say I guess the right way you are doing the right way yeah I mean so many people do it the wrong way bro or, or backwards or you're doing it for the right reasons yeah so many people do it for the wrong reasons yeah you know because True. oh they she's already pregnant or she's about to have the, or they already have kids together and they want to just yeah. or oh it's easier to buy a house and you know yeah when you're married or um or you can go way extreme it's like oh she's not a citizen and she paid me 30 yeah. grand to yeah that's you know. actually not extreme nowadays that's it's not extreme, pretty yeah. uh normal yeah with trump Normality. in office that's that's where <laughs> and they're making it harder I, I heard so yeah they make it hard right yeah. you see what pelosi pelosi did Oh yeah, she tore up the. So what do you? Uh, so what do you think about that? I was gonna say. I mean, man, that's an impeachment. That impeachment. Did you it's, know what happened about the impeachment? Yeah, though? he got acquitted. Acquitted, bro. Yeah. See, this is this is the thing. I mean, whether whether our view, well, whether people have different views. I mean, this is what it seems like to my, in my opinion, the first, the first president in a while that actually stands up for. More, you can say morality issues from a Christian worldview automatically they just they just start they just start going against it you know and because yeah. he's he's pro-life he's he's for he's for the things that you know uh, I was talking to um somebody the other day he's pro-life he allows uh, prayer in the white house like they actually take time he's to, for peace jerusalem and israel he's pro israel he's, yeah exactly and they try to they were starting his impeachment before he was even elected bro yeah so the, yeah actually when he the day he got elected i heard that um they someone tweeted that um the impeachment of donald trump starts today yeah like they were already gearing towards it you know so yeah you kind of have to you kind of have to understand it when you stand up for right things, there's always going to be a blowback or there's always going to be opposition. But what are they going to do to Pelosi though? I mean, she, well, she's running, right? Well, no. Yeah. Yeah. She's running. And not only that, like, I don't think that she was disrespecting. I mean, she was trying to disrespect Trump. Well, he was disrespecting all those people that, that he was uh, congratulating and, and honoring. Yeah. Like, um, I mean, she got her feelings hurt. He didn't shake her hand, yeah, and she, hand. she, she got all emotional. Yeah, you can't say that because she's a woman. Can't yeah, say well, I just said it here no, first. I was a- <laughs> Straight talk. <laughs> you got to say um, offended. No, yeah, man. She better go in a safe space when she's around me. <laughs> <laughs> I bro, I I really hope though that they bring it up and that they 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 sh- they reveal like how disrespectful it really was. You know? Yeah. Because. I saw that this morning and I was like, dude, like even, even like, um, the soldier coming back home, you know, um, wh- what's his name? A talk show host, um, Rush Limbaugh. Lim- oh yeah. R- Limbaugh. Limbaugh. Is that how you say it? Rush Limbaugh. Limbo. Limbaugh. Yeah. Limbo or Limbaugh? Rush Limbaugh. Yeah. Rush Limbaugh got the, um, presidential medal of freedom. Um, for all of his years of like dedication to the country and it's the highest honor for a civilian notorious for a contribution to security or national interests of the United States, world peace, cultural and other. And he got that for being a talk show. Yeah. Like host? he was, he was like a, a very, I used to listen to him. My dad used yeah. to you know, he play to, him on the way to school. I heard him a few times and, um, the kid that was like, got a scholarship cause he wants to become part of the, um, the spirit. Space Force. Have you heard of that? So the Air Force is now creating a Space Force for people that want to go to space. And wow, yeah. And the, and there's a kid there that they recognized and gave him a scholarship for that because he was like, I want to, I want to be go to space. Wow, kid, bro. Like, how old was he? He was like a uh, young dude, like 11, 12, maybe younger. Um, and then so what did she? How did she disrespect? I didn't hear about that story. She tore up. She she tore, she it tore up. up his speech. Yeah, the State of the Union, um, the State of the State of State of the Union, State address. of the Union address 
Uh, the White House tweeted out, uh, Speaker Pelosi just ripped up one of our last surviving um, um, Tastigi Airmen, the, survive, the survival of a child born at 21 weeks. The mourning families of Rocky Jones and Kyla, Kayla Mueller, a service member's reunion with his family. That's her legacy. Like the White House tweeted that out. That's what I was getting to. When she ripped that up, she didn't rip up Donald Trump's speech. She ripped up him honoring these people. He didn't talk about himself. He didn't talk about anything. He talked about the accomplishments of the United States, of our of our military, and of these these people that are being honored. And she just rips it up. Yeah. Because she was well, butt hurt. Because she was butt hurt. Yeah, it shows a lot about her character. Yeah. So yeah, I don't want that somebody like that in the White and, House. And I... I, I I'm interested to see how she tries to flip it, you know? Yeah. There's no flipping that, dude. I think Democrat, Democratic or Republican, that's disrespectful. And I think yeah. I think if people are honest with themselves, they'll they'll be they'll realize, yeah, that, that is disrespectful, you know. So I went to the Kanye West oh, to you one of his Sunday services in Phoenix at the Sun Devils. It was very interesting. It was very it was a good experience to experience one live. That those things are like ten hours, huh? Yeah, because it was more so of a, like a, um, it wasn't just his like concert. A, like a, it was a more, of a, it was, you know, it's more like a festival. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, how many groups did you see? Well, there was a lot of speakers, guest oh, speakers, like preachers, pastors, pre- preachers, um, the president of the Tohoto Odom Nation. <laughs> Really, and he did a prayer in the beginning, and he, he's a Christian. Yeah, he's a Christian. Really, and he's a president really? of the whole nation. Wow. Yeah, and his vice president, I believe, is a Christian. So they came and they did this prayer, and it was really, uh, it's powerful. Yeah. Wow. You could really, it, it's it was what was interesting when uh, Kanye came was uh, people, you know, people go to see him. Cause he's people, he's popular and because he's yay. Yeah. He's yay. He's easy. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. it was very interesting the way that he carried himself. Um, when he's he wasn't, different, bro. he wasn't taking a lot of the attention. Yeah. Which a lot of people noticed. He wasn't, he was in the background a lot. His mm. choir was up front and he wasn't like center of attention. He was in the wow. background. Yeah, and it was it was really it was really interesting to see. I've never seen anything like that. He would pop in and out, and it was, he would give other people the spotlight. He wouldn't really, so he only came up a couple times. I wonder and, how many people there are actually Christian, or they're just going to get a free Kanye show. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Well, because I we noticed too that as soon as he was done, he only had maybe an hour, two hours. Yeah, and as soon as he was done, almost half of the. Or at least a quarter of the whole stadium got up and took off. Oh, yeah, and that guy Brian Head, I think that's his name, right? From From Corn, Corn? yeah, yeah. He came up after, and then he just noticed everybody. He was like, "Man, everybody's taking off because of Kanye." I guess. Oh, yeah. He kind of got. Yeah, he kind of. I would have been sad too, dude. He was sad, dude. Did they not announce that he was going to come out? I, I guess they did, but <gasps> well, it was that's even worse. It dude. was probably in the fine print. And Kanye was <laughs> all big, <laughs> and then it's right now wow. important. Yeah. So, so but, he got saved, huh? Yeah. So wow. it was. It was I heard he has a powerful, te- powerful testimony. Yeah, he really does. Became a Christian. Yeah. Because his music was like crazy, huh? Yeah, corn, corn. I never really listened to like heavy metal like that. Is it heavy metal? Yeah. I yeah, you could say that. But just because of how like dark and you know crazy it is, you know. But yeah, I I I kind of I I liked uh I liked some you know I went through phases of listening to some rock. My brother used to listen to um Slipknot, Offspring. No, Offspring. Yeah, like like a uh, more like Offspring uh, system of a down. System of a Down, I've heard. Yeah. Breaking yeah. Benjamin. Yeah. I listen New to Emery. Metal. Have you ever heard Emery? No, I never listened to that. Oh. Emery's a good band. And they're Christian, but they're like they're like hard. Ah. Uh, hard rock. Yeah. They they metal. started off like as like alternative. Know, dude, they're 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 a weird band, bro. Like I feel like they're Christian and then I feel like sometimes they're not. You know, like they yeah. have they had their whole um like they believe in cussing, they drink. 
Yeah. So recently I found this out, you know, like, um, I went to one of their shows and, um, there was a package that you could purchase for the, for the group. Um, so I went to one of the shows here at, in, in, at the Rialto. It was pretty dope. They did all like their old classics and some new songs. And then, um, some of my buddies, um, they're like, Hey, we're going to go to the Emory concert. Um, we're going to get the uh, VIP package. And I guess the VIP package is you, um, you get to go on the VIP bus with them mm-hmm. for like, I don't know, before the show, like an hour and you get like two drinks or something and you have drinks with them and they do like an acoustic set for the VIPs. But, um, I guess, you know, and when they say drinks, they mean alcoholic drinks. It's not like, you know? Yeah. So, um, they do that and then they, um, I, I they have a podcast and th- their whole website is called badchristian.com. That's their website. Yeah. And so I don't know if they're, I would call them Christians anymore. You know what I mean? Just cause yeah. of like what they're promoting and stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. A lot of times like I listen to Christian rap and, and, um, I listen to a couple people that started out with the good message and mm. producing good, good, uh, music and glorifying God. But then, you know, I think the world, I think there's a, <laughs> just a fine line between the world and the yeah. kingdom, you know? Like what do you what do you do for fun? What are your hobbies? My hobbies? Yeah. Um, I like art. When I get get around to it, I like doing art, just messing around with like uh different material and I like uh playing around with art, painting and stuff and That's what Mariah's into yeah. as well though. Yeah, I know. That's what well, that was one of our our main uh common interests that we art. Yes. Yeah, I I used to draw quite a bit too. The thing I yeah. like about art is that art is so uh it's transparent. It doesn't it doesn't mean like uh like in the way that I look at it is that anything can be art. Mm-hmm. And there's people that are more <laughs> talented than others in certain certain types of art, but art is all yeah, it's, uh, it's relative. like me, I like visual art. I'm more of a visual artist. Like I like to, I see things and I, um, I create out of what I see visually. So you, are you more abstract? Yeah. I like abstract stuff. Yeah. It's just what comes out. But Mariah is really very good detail. Live, um, live art, you know? Yeah. I started off with, um, drawing, um, like stationary objects. You know, like things I could see. Yeah. Um, I was never really good at like creating things from from fantasy or yeah, you know, just like, my mind. You yeah, know? yeah. Uh, There's some I, people that can. I could, but it would just be like it would just look stupid. You know. Yeah, like to me. And it's all it's all you know. Um, what's the word they they call art? Um, it's the way. Like there's no good art or bad art it's based off of your opinion. It's all opinionated. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So I I mainly um like to draw what I see and then the other version is uh, I got into portraits. Yeah, that's drawing that takes, people, drawing faces. That takes a lot of talent. I sold one. I drew Jay Z one time. Did you? Did you have the big fish lips? Yeah, he's on. Yeah, I drew him. Uh I sold it for like sixty bucks. Man, that's real. Yeah, this guy was like Was hey. he blind? No. Yeah. Was he? No, it was a pretty good drawing, actually. Like Dumb and Dumber. Did I show, have I showed it to you? Sounds in the dead bird, the tape, his head taped <laughs> on. Uh, let me. Sh- I'll show you a photo of it. Oh, uh, you saw you saw my Arnold Schwarzenegger. I drew, huh? Yeah. No, I got into <laughs> like uh, um, bands at the church would ask to create like a like a sign for like them a backdrop yeah like a backdrop so that's how i got into you know stage design and stuff like that so i like props and backdrops of that's the type of stuff i like to do so i try i try to draw uh here's one of them i try to draw james franco wow dude and that was the photo you know who you know that one it looks like a different actor so here, here's jay-z right yeah that's one I drew. No, I'm just kidding. Here's the drawing of it, though. I sold it for um for sixty bucks. Sixty bucks online or how'd you? Not to a friend. 
He saw it in person. Was like, I want that. <laughs> That's that's real good. <laughs> his face is too long. Yeah, huh? his face is long. <laughs> it looks like him. I mean, it's really it's very uh, yeah, I, I, very similar, but like uh, yeah. it almost looks like he's like giving a different look. No, yeah, posing I, uh, differently. I um, like, after I was I was so focused on it, you know, getting the eyes right, you know, like the yeah. eyes, you know getting everything right everything by themselves is correct yeah but i made like his like lower mouth like stretched out and like <laughs> like a banana almost you know just like you know it almost looks like a giraffe long face yeah and like the back of his head just like cuts off like <laughs> like by the ear that's pretty good though man that's really good that's very that's a lot of talent right there yeah thanks man um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I can't, I don't have enough patience for that. <laughs> yeah. I have to see things like I want to see, I want to see, um, progress yeah. quickly. Yeah, yeah. I like to, well, how I discovered doing art was expressing like my feelings. I had a, I had a just, I was going through something and I just, mm. I had a lot of time on my hands and I just had to express all the feelings that I was feeling at the time a lot of pain and and uh sadness and mm. um i had lost a friend of mine so i was taking it pretty bad and didn't know how to process it so i started just i was like i grabbed some paint markers and i was like man i gotta just i gotta get all my feelings out somehow i got it work oh yeah absolutely really oh yeah it I'm, was a very it was very stress relieving you know really it was just yeah really that's how i discovered See, I never, I never approached it that way, you know, because when it, whenever I drew, it was always just like, it has to be exact, yeah, you yeah. know, it's a form of expression, mm. you know, and you get your, um, I also did that like with fashion, mm. the way that I was feeling, I, I would, I would, uh, I would dress, I would make, you know, outfits and yeah, so it was crazy. That's how I discovered that I liked doing art. I never did it before. Wow. Probably like 27 years old. I just one day I was like, I was just so overwhelmed and I just sat down and I just started painting. And How old were you? 27. 27. Oh, that was recently. Yeah. So it was really. So you didn't draw when growing up? Not really. It was more. No, like, my brother was real good. Really? Real good uh, with pencil. But I, I, I mean, I like I always I love art. I liked yeah. it and stuff, but I never actually did it. Wow. I didn't have a lot of hobbies growing up you've come a long way yeah man journey i know that um yeah it's been a journey so now i know i know in the past you used to do a lot of drugs yeah so did you ever do art while you were on drugs oh yeah yeah well i think that was uh that was a part of i mean i did drugs all the time like all day every day so i i probably <laughs> did did I was probably high when I was doing. Do you think that the uh, art. affected your art? Yeah, like um, I know that um, smoking weed. Sometimes people say that it it gives you creative, gives you some type of creativity, mm. which I think we have naturally. But I think it just does something to you. It uh, creates things in your brain, you know, certain turns certain. Creative. Well, it mellows you out. Yeah. So you can like so relax I was, and yeah. So yeah. So I started like having an interest while I was smoking weed. I guess. Did you ever look at your drawings after you were on drugs and like, what the heck is that? Well, I didn't get too much into it no? like that. Not like uh. Well, we. What I tell people too, I did. I did a little bit of research. Uh, weed affects the neocortex of your brain. So that is uh, responsible for deep thinking and judgment. Mm. So your judgment's off, you know. And so something that you would, you wouldn't do while you're high, you would. You think it's okay to yeah, do? Yeah, you think it's okay, or you just you're just you lack you lack of that good. No, so something you making. something you wouldn't do while you weren't high. You All think, of a sudden, you it think just, it's okay. Well, or you just you, you don't, don't have really that. Care. You're not sharp. You're not sharp. You know, you're not yeah. like you don't think twice about it. You're yeah. just kind of like, well, it kind of looks like a good idea. That's part of the reason why I don't do drugs now. Like as I'm older. Yeah. 
because I didn't like it. You know, I didn't like the way it made me yeah. feel like out of not in control. You know what I mean? Right. Not not like aware. Um, and the other re- reason is my faith, you know. Yeah. When I gave my life to Jesus, I just really <coughs> discovered that my the what I wanted to do change, you know, the things that I used to do I didn't have to do it anymore and God gave me that. Can a heroin addict truly change? So I think anybody can change, but there's an aspect of what the human will can do and the power of God can do. Because there's so many people that are hooked on heroin. Mm -hmm. Um, Is it opioids? Yeah. The opioid epidemic in the country. Mm -hmm. Um, I have personal family members that are hooked on heroin Mm -hmm. as we speak. And it seems like it's almost impossible for them to stop or for them to change. Um, Cause it's physically heroin and opiates are physically addicting. And that's what, that's what the difference is. It changes your, well, your no, physiology, right? W- right. Well, the withdrawal is a physical withdrawal. Mm. So you're also not only are you craving it with your mind, <laughs> but your, your body is going through a change when you do not have the drug. Cause your body adapts to the, to having the drug every day so so i think that's why people because i know for me when i was going through withdrawals man there's no there's a a a pain that's indescribable when you're going through withdrawals it's it's like having a flu times a thousand like your body cramps up you have an you have anxiety you have you can get diarrhea vomiting i mean shakes cold chills everything so i think that's why a lot of people they don't want to think of that pain they don't want to so they just and that's me too i mean i did it for five years so i was in my addiction for five years and a lot of it i would you understand the work that you're gonna have to put into it and so you don't really well i wanna. think well you you, know, you just don't want to experience that pain yeah. so when you think about okay i gotta get off get off of this our our minds immediately go well man I'm gonna have to go through this pain and mm. it's easier to get high than it is to go through that to fight I mean I, when you're a full blown they say uh they say one year after one year of everyday use the withdrawals go to seven days so so a regular would be three days so imagine going through the worst flu that you've ever had and anxiety and all this stuff and like, depression is it, is it like for a, seven days is it like a 24 yeah. hour thing oh yeah seven. there's no breaks or do you get like a, a wind like a no you're just going through this agonizing so, so pain the, so is that seven years times every year the seven seven days are times every year no it's just, it's just like seven uh, days. more like um so the withdrawals like say if you're using for like a month right yeah let's just say you're using three times a week for a month yeah. When you try to stop, your your body is gonna try to is is gonna crave it for about three days, give or take. So you were doing it for years. How long did it take for you? Well, to withdraw? if once I started doing it every day for a year, yeah, a year or more, my withdrawals got l- longer. So three days, four days, five days, six days. So were you? And every day user will go through a longer period of were withdrawals. You, were you withdrawing in uh, rehab? Oh yeah. How, but how they, long did you withdraw? They, um, they give you medicine. They, they give you medicine. They wean you off. Uh, so that's what I'm saying is that people that that um, are trying to get off. That's the first. Down. That's yeah. the first thing that people think of. And so I think there has to be an element of some for some people. There has to be an element of medical treatment. We get so hooked on the idea that um, they're done. You know, like yeah. Um, I know. There's been multiple times that you know. People have been placed into rehabs and, and try to change on their own. And I think the well, haven't. I think the number, I think the first where you have to start out for me was <coughs> you have to have the desire to want to change. So you have to want to. So you did you did heroin? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I started on prescription pills though. You started on prescription pills. Yeah. When didn't you say you started on weed, on marijuana? Yeah. First, I've well, yeah. I I was um, I started smoking weed i mean you know i i didn't 
I was doing drugs at a very young age, smoking weed first, and then just really experimental drugs. I used to like acid and stuff. Uh, I did. I've done. I've never done acid, but I. I just. I just done a lot. I mean, I've done ecstasy, shrooms. I started weed and stuff, but um, yeah. So weed makes you kind of. It's a gateway drug. I would say yeah. I never thought that it was, but it it really people is. that do it don't think it is, huh? Yeah, they never see themselves graduating from that. Yeah, yeah, because you always want to get higher, and you always, you know, it's not enough. So, it? so would you say there's like a, a a point where smoking weed just doesn't get you as high because you get like an well, some people are fine with just smoking weed, but like <coughs> for me, I just I wanted to get a different type of high, or I wanted I seen. Other people like yeah, reach I a love level. it. Seeing other people like, oh man, what's he on? I want to get that high, or I want to, I want to do that, or wow. and then a lot of it's the uh, environment partying. We were partying a lot in high school, so and also your personal life, what you're going through, right? Well, that's that's the big thing. I think uh, everybody try. I mean, for me, it was a self medication thing. I was self medicating. So when I was younger, I developed a. a habit of of self medicating anytime that I was going through any anything so so it was for me it was weed and that's the way that I but I escaped and <coughs> was medicating the pain that I was going through and the you know the situations in my yeah. home and stuff like that but um and then it just goes to it's just living a lifestyle of self medicating and then so that can look like all different kinds of drugs you know but you're you're pretty much trying to solve an issue with escaping Mm. and so how how long would you say that escape lasts for i mean it can last years i mean i was 14 to i finally got sober completely i would say about um 27 so 20 27 Dang, bro. and I and I went to rehab that's, when that's I was nearly 15 years that's like 12 years yeah right? so it's it's you have to come to a point where, first of all like with your question can somebody change they have to want to change mm. and I think that if anybody wants to change bad enough the I think the human will that's what I was saying earlier is the human will can go f- pretty far I mean I've seen people Mm-hmm. quit cigarettes i've seen you know they say that cigarettes are harder than heroin that's what they're telling me in rehab and mm-hmm. i smoke cigarettes too and it's it's really hard to stop that but i've seen people that can't stop mm-hmm. that but i think in my belief that the human will can only go so it only goes so far it reaches a plateau yeah. of what you can do, do you th- on your do you think people strength. will in attempting to to stop or um change do you think that they they pick up other habits to supplement those habits absolutely absolutely well you got to replace it with something you mm. know and even uh i went to rehab in 2015 and uh how long were you in rehab for i was in for a month i was in so you California. don't need to, you don't need to be there that long then well there's different there's different different uh, types yeah okay. well you can live at, like so i went for in a month where they uh where you um they weaned you off of heroin and and uh they do everything medically and everything like that but then you can transfer to a living a sober living they call it sober living where Mm. you live there for six months and it's kind of they try to (coughs) they try to uh transition you into normal yeah lifestyle so so you 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 went through rehab then you you stopped um you overcame your addiction right in rehab well i got i got sober but you weren't done with your addiction you don't think well i mean i think it's a lot i think it's a lot more deeper than that but i mean i thought that i did so you thought that's what i'm getting at yeah you thought so you, you, i i in thought your mind I you were you were done with your addiction right and then life hit again right yeah so in rehab they teach you a lot of coping met- methods and and different type of um, method methodology that they have you know like going to meetings mm. and getting a sponsor somebody that you can talk to so it was kind of like you know if you do these things you, you have, have a, a better chance, chance. you have yeah. a better chance of staying sober mm. so 
um, right when I got out, I tried to do that for a little bit, and I even was going uh, going to church for a little bit. And then, see, a lot of things is uh, is very practical. Like if you want, if if people want to get free from addiction, <coughs> there's a lot of practical steps. You know, like the people that you hang out yeah. with. So when I came back, I started hanging out with the same people, mm. and you can't, you know, eventually you're gonna you're, you're gonna, gonna fall into that same situation where patterns yeah. yeah so ultimately um you've been sober now going on what three years four years well um from heroin five years january 8 okay. 2015 was okay. my was my uh date so this january it was five years five years but everything three years i mean three everything years. weed because i was doing meth and heroin when i was Oh, so you were yeah, still was, doing other drugs, just not heroin. Well, yeah, right. Wow. So, so I can't. But three years for everything, completely sober. So what got you sober? Um, for those three years, like what changed? The change was my relationship, and my um, my relationship with God it was what gave me the power, the beyond human ability, the power to overcome those addictions the power but i i feel that the, there is a real epidemic mm-hmm. and there is you know everyone right. talks about it right there's a real issue um for someone that's struggling with this very thing that you struggled with mm-hmm. um and they're trying over and over um so many people are turned off to you know Christianity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, the thing is, is I think people are going to come to a point where a program doesn't do it for you because a program is not what kept me clean Mm. and and a program. And I went to a really good program, you know, and top facility. And so people will come to a realization that it it takes more than a program. It takes more than Mm. just wanting to change. (coughs) You got to want to change is the first step I would say. But it takes a, a different entity of power. It takes Jesus. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, in people's mind that don't you know, subscribe and, to. And there's some people that, that give Jesus that opportunity. Right. But they end up realizing that they still have to try. They still have to fight. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it takes it takes that real dedication to saying, you know what, I'm I'm done. And I'm going right. to lean on Christ for right. strength. To, yeah, and a lot of things, man, yeah. when I gave my life to Christ, I started I started asking him because I realized when I got home from rehab that I still wanted to do yeah, the you things. Had the desire. I was clean, but I still, in my you heart, deep inside, well, I still wanted, I still liked and wanted to get high. I still mm. desired to want to do that. So no matter what, where you at, wh- wherever you're at, mm. wherever... Where, I mean, I could move to Canada. So they can't take that desire away. In, right. And a human, your human ability, you can't really, you can replace mm. them, but you can't change mm. what you want to do. So I started praying, God, you got to change what I want to do. I was very honest with myself and I wanted to change bad, but I, but I didn't. So I was like torn. I was torn. So I was, you know, the Bible says, I know you know this, but it says, Come to me who are come to me uh, all you who are weary and heavy laden and I'll give you rest. Right. You know. And that's just what came to my mind when you said that. Like like you were yeah, you tired. were tired of it. Right. You wanted to be free, but you didn't you did everything in your power, like you said. Right. You you reached your your the pinnacle of your ability. Your, my will, your yeah. will. And he said, God, I'm tired of yeah. this. And then little by little mm. he started changing me. Like it wasn't with weed and and uh and the other other drugs that I was doing, I was doing meth um, a lot with the weed. And uh, so when I first got saved, I mean, it took it took a couple weeks, a month, and I was just praying, God, dude, look at you now, change, bro. Man. I mean, and, God completely changed your your whole life, dude. Yeah, and that's what I tell people: is that's the evidence. Oh God, yeah. that's the evidence. Yeah. I mean, it co- I mean, yeah. a religion and a program yeah. doesn't do that. And would you say you grew up in a good home? Yeah. You grew up in a good home. Yeah. Um, Great parents. Your parents were Christians, right? Yeah. You grew up with Christian parents. Yeah. Um, and then me on the other end, I am uh, grew up in a broken home. Right. Um, 
one one parent um depressed angry i was an angry child bro i was i was angry bro yeah. growing up and um now you look at your life and my life and it's just completely it doesn't make sense on how we got from there to here you know what i mean yeah so that's awesome that you shared that because i think for the people watching from home um Maybe maybe someone can grab onto that and say, you know what? I've tried all this other stuff. I want to try. Yeah, and when you want to yeah. change, you know, you got to understand that that's what God desires for you, too. Yeah. He yeah, wants yeah. you to. He's on your side. Yeah. He wants to see you change. He wants you to depend on him for everything. So, yeah, I mean, people think of God sometimes as this, you know, this angry God that just wants to punish. But his desire is that we would we would come to him yeah. and live for him and give our whole everything to him and when you do and you surrender that's when the change mm. it just comes naturally it starts to, you start to yeah. change because all that stuff starts to fall off yeah you know so if you're watching real quick um and this is something that you want drop in the comments below reach out and uh we can talk that i'm happy that you're you know man i'm happy i never you know of that long of drug use i didn't i didn't see a way i didn't really i i it's funny i told my aunt it's not funny but i mean i told this is how really god is i told my aunt i um she remembers this too i told her oh never st i don't think i'll ever stop smoking weed like i love doing yeah dope pretty much and yeah. i told her i love doing it i don't think i'll ever stop and it's it's um because you don't see it hope you know but mm -hmm. i always say there's no high like the most high like i'm a, i'm high every day when i'm high off i'm my high off the most high you know yeah so wow life is way better sober than it is high i tell you that much well man it's been fun having you on here bro yeah man anytime i'm i'm uh i'm excited about being here and cool man yeah hey bro all right, bro. That's it. That's it.